stopped in part one for Micrologic's 1400 wiring discussions and the discussions were germane to machine control, process control, or just building a learning station for the classroom or for your personal at-home hands-on learning experience. The information is the same. How you look at the screw terminals, the common connections, etc. And I knew it would take more than one discussion because, like I said, I tend to do a mind dump. So I don't even know what I'm going to say when I start. I just start talking about it knowing where I have to get to. So I try to get an idea where you might be, the person that knows the least about the subject. And then I make a straight line in my mind to where I want you to get. Now, one thing that I was dependent upon for both these, the previous and this, was that you had already watched the lectures and discussions for building a digital field device simulator. I'm not going to repeat those in every discussion for building a trainer. So if you haven't watched those, there were, I think, seven of them. Six specific to the digital field device simulator, and that is the box with the lights and switches on it. And then the seventh one was connecting it to a micro 800 controller. The information is good no matter what controller we're hooking it to. These two, the previous one and this one, are for the 1400. The 1100 is very similar, but the screw terminals look different. But the same idea holds of isolation of groups of inputs and outputs. Now the previous one, we stopped right in the middle of analog. I'm going to pick this one back up at the beginning of analog. So you're going to hear a little repeat but I'll go through it fast and then keep on going to finish out the analog. And then I want to get to actually looking at one that's wired up in a, a full view and then talking about some of the connections. And again, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm just going to dump what I know on you. You can sort it out. So let's do it. In the last session, we stopped right in the middle of analog. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of analog and repeat just a little of it. Here you're looking at two connections, analog inputs, 0 and 3. Now the, the Micrologix 1400 supports four analog inputs. We have two of them hooked up and we have two wiring diagrams. One is connected to the controller and the other is just setting out in the free space to the right. One of them has components and the other has symbols. Let's look at the one with symbols. And we have something that you may not have noticed before, and that is the binding post. Binding post, uh, and you'll see pictures later on of them, they look like speaker terminals where you, you unscrew the hex there and you slide in a wire and then you tighten it down. And you can also plug in a, a banana plug into the gray center. And the reason we do this is to make our analog I.O. field extendable. So in the case of the two analog inputs, 0 and 3, a toggle switch allows you to pick between a potentiometer and the binding post. So we have 24 volts DC coming in. It's the same 24 that you see up above on the output side coming from the same power supply and it goes to a bucking voltage converter of which you can see a photograph of over in the right hand corner and you adjust that potentiometer for something 10 volts or better across two potentiometers and then you send the wiper arms down to uh, two sets of toggle switches that you can pick between the 0 to 10 on the potentiometer or the external analog input. In other words, if you have your own analog input devices, you know, actual field devices that you use at your work, you can connect those into here and connect them directly into your controller. And then on the other side, you see two potentiometers and you see the wiper arms are green and gray. They go to toggle switches and the toggle switches select between analog input zeros red terminal or the potentiometer wiper arm. And then of course that circuit card there is that um, 
bucking voltage converter. And that converter, you feed in a, a DC voltage and then you can adjust the blue potentiometer for an output voltage anywhere um, from zero to, well, not really true zero, but pretty low, all the way up to close to whatever your input is. So you can put in more than 30 volts into this bucking voltage converter. We're putting in 24 and adjusting it to 10 and a half. So there's your analog inputs and your analog outputs. Oh, I'm sorry, here's another one of the inputs that we went over. And uh, I did mention that the orange and the yellow wires, uh, I should have used the blue and the brown because the toggle switch is the bottom position is 0 to 20 milliamps and you can't do that in this situation. So when you wire yours up, you're going to run the blue and the brown to uh, analog input V1 and V2. And then you see the diagram over uh, to the right of that that shows the actual toggle switches. Okay, where we didn't get to was this illustration that shows our two output voltage, analog output voltage 0 and 1. And you notice, of course, the common is connected to the same common of the power supply. Because we are supplying 24 volts DC to power those digital displays. Now those digital displays come in a couple different flavors. Two wire, three wire, four wire. If you're going to buy these, you want three or four wire. You don't want the two wire because the two wire has to use the voltage that you're measuring to power it as well. And it takes at least five and a half, six, volt, six volts to power these little digital displays, which means if you have an analog output of three volts, the, the meters aren't going to light up. So you need a separate power input to those meters than the measured input. And so you look at the diagram over to the right, you see the binding post that we mentioned, and you see the top one, well both have two white connectors, and the bottom white connectors are wired up in parallel. All of the negative connections are wired together. And then you see a green going to a red binding post and going down, and then you see the gray going to a binding post and then down. So those would represent output voltage zero and one. Okay, now you don't have to have five digit full ohmmeters or digital displays. Three digits is plenty. As a matter of fact, if you get three digits in this DIN style uh, device, they're going to be larger uh, characters. Uh, I just use these because I like the looks of them. But we all know that 2.5007 might as well be 2.5 as far as accuracy goes and usability in your um, signed or unsigned integer use of uh, A to D and D to A converters that ten thousandths of a volt, seven ten thousandths of a volt means nothing. It's useless. So you really don't need any more than three digits and a decimal place anyway. Earlier we showed you orange connections <clears throat> and we mentioned that was for high speed counters, 8, 9, 10, 11. That is a complete full speed counter input that we're using. A lot of these controllers have six high speed counter capability, but not full. It's either three or two or six halves. So you can have six high speed counters with this controller, but they're not full high speed counters with all four input connections. Now in this case, we're only showing you the phase A and phase B of an encoder hooked into input A and input 9. So we're not even really demonstrating the full capability of a high-speed counter in a MicroLogix 1400. Now remember this is BXB. The BXB A has analog. The BXB has everything else, just no analog. But it has high-speed inputs and it has PTO and PWM outputs. So this is just a reminder here that 
We also have inputs 8, 9, 10, 11 on our training units wired up to four orange terminal blocks so we can hook up an encoder or any other kind of high-speed device. On the output side, and remember that I showed the white wires as gray, but there are white wires on my units and they go to white terminal blocks. And we have those wired up to, in this case, we're showing the amplifier, if you will, or the driver, stepper driver circuit for a stepper motor. And we're sending the pulses out output two. That's why you see just that blue wire going in. And then going out to the motor, we would have phase A and B, but you can't, there's nothing connected up. We don't have a motor connected up. I just showed you this for instance. One thing you could do with a uh, pulse train or PWM output is from these three terminals, two, three, and four. In other words, that's what I have wired up on my training units. And remember that these high-speed counter functions are specific to certain input terminals because if you can use a high-speed counter on one of these inputs, it has its own special electronics built into each of those inputs that do the high-speed counting that would get missed by a normal input scan from your controller. And this diagram, I just threw this in here to show you that we have unused inputs, six and seven, wired up to two blue terminal blocks, and we have two unused outputs, six and seven, wired up to two green terminal blocks. And of course, there's the uh, PTO, PWM, they're dark gray, and they show going to white terminals, and then your high-speed counter going to the orange terminals. And then the yellow would be analog output, and the brown analog input and then of course you always have to have plenty of black terminals or the ability to connect up all the grounds and commons that you need to connect up. So at this point let's jump over to an actual pleated learning station and discuss it just a little. Okay here we have a completed BXBA training station. What we don't show here what we don't show here is the analog field device simulator. And notice that the yellow and brown terminals would go through a wiring harness over to these yellow and brown terminals on this end. We can't get this all in there necessarily in one image, so we're leaving the analog field device simulation out. So coming out of the top of this field device simulator, we have our green and blue wires, green for output, blue for input. We have a plus 24 volt red wire and a minus or zero volt DC wire. Okay, and all of these inputs or all these devices here, remember we have a toggle switch and a form C contact push button. They are wired in series and go through the blue wires over to the inputs 0 through 5. And then we also have green wires that come in and feed 24 volts DC to these LEDs from over on this side. Now you see a lot of green wires there, but we're only using 0 through 5 to these 6 outputs and 0 through 5 here to these 6 inputs. All the rest of these wires really have nothing to do with this field device simulator. However, we do have a common zero volt DC that, and it really doesn't matter where it starts, whether it starts here or starts here, all of the commons, see even the common for the analog here and the common for the analog there, all of those black wires are hooked into one common zero volt DC bus. And that includes all of these black terminals uh, here and here, they're all connected together. And I see the little jumpers in there. So we only needed to bring in one black conductor here to make all three of these zero volts DC and one conductor here. But we're using all of these different uh, screw terminals to land common zero volt DC uh, voltage points. And then, of course, for plus DC, we do extend it out to this switched 
uh, fused terminal block, but we have nothing connected on the other side. So if we have circuitry out here, devices that need plus 24 volts DC, we can get it out through this fused switched terminal block. That gives us the ability to turn all this out here on or off. Now, if you if you look close, you'll see the this is the plus 24 volt DC input, and this is the if you want to call it neutral or zero volts DC. So this red is jumper to all the common plus terminals all the way out to here, and then the negative is connected to just a couple here, whereas most of the zero volt DCs are on this side. So in some cases here, you will see more than one wire under each screw terminal. So if you look at this one, it's got a green and a white. So this green wire goes to um, one of these lights and it can also go to, because you have a white wire there, going to this uh, PTO. Remember these are outputs. So we've got three PTO PWM outputs here and they do double duty to three connections here. This one, this one down here, and this one. Now, uh, you think, well, is there a conflict there? No, there's not, because it has to do with how you program this, what it's trying to do, and what you have connected at the other end of these green wires. If it happens to be lights, so what if they go off and on when you're running your PTO or PWM code over here? And here you see we have four orange wires. Those go to the high-speed counter inputs. So you see this does get pretty congested. So you need to do some wire management up front. And you have to think out how you're going to uh, daisy chain the two main courses of connections. That's the black wire for zero volts DC and the red wire for plus volts DC. And you can see that I have a wiring harness connected here and this at the other end, you see I have a couple connectors. Looking at this right here, I can see that was going out to a three axis uh, stepper motor configuration. And that's why you see that I have a couple DC wires here, uh, inputs coming back. I have all these wires here going out because remember for a stepper motor, uh, besides having the pulse out for the step speed, you also have direction and possibly enable, amongst other things. This is a good example of using the digital field device simulator connected up to the MicroLogix 1400 controller. We've already showed you all the wiring diagrams, so there's really not much else to look at except what you've seen.